Hello, and welcome to another episode of In the Power Room. I'm Mike Moore. In 1859, Gaston Planté discovered the first lead-acid battery. This was also the first rechargeable, or what they refer to as secondary batteries. And what made these so important is that it provided an electrical storage system that you could actually recharge. So what we're going to do today is uh, do a dissection on a modern-day 12-volt absorbed glass mat product. You can see from the top here, this has a positive and a negative. You can see the negative sign, you can see the positive sign. When we put our voltmeter across this, with the voltmeter set to volts DC, this battery produces roughly 12.75 volts. So it, it's ready to go. It has been open circuit for a period of time, and uh, Without waiting any longer, we're going to do a dissection on this battery and show you what the insides of one of these products look like. So I have my Sawzall, safety glasses, gloves. So first what we're going to do is we're going to put a slice so we can keep those negative and positive terminals intact. So that came out with a lot of hassle. <laughs> Let's pull one of these guys out. Boy, can. Easy. So this is an element. This is a 2 volt element. So in a 12 volt monoblock you would see 6 cells and there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The connections to make this a series connection internally to this monoblock is going through the partition. These are the partition walls right here. And the partition walls they did a penetration through so the negative and positive connects across and then they just make the series connection over. So when you pull out the element, or the cell, you can see your negative strap and you can see your positive strap. When you look at the element, you can see the negative plates are always on the outside on a lead acid battery just to get the most utilization of the active material which is in the positive. So there's a uh, negative plate. This particular battery is for a UPS application. And as you notice, the plates are really thin. Why do you have the plates real thin? The big reason for that is for high rate discharges, such as what you would see in a UPS application, you want to have as much surface area as possible. So in order to get a high rate discharge, meaning at like 15 minutes or less, you really want to stuff as much surface area as possible. And you see the negative plate is this uh, silvery looking color. And then there's your separator, which is what they call the absorbed glass mat. This does two things. It acts as a separator between the negative and positive. And if you look at it, it holds the electrolyte. So if we squeeze it, we can see some liquid. That liquid is sulfuric acid. When we go through this next plate, we now see our positive. And the positive typically is going to be a nice chocolate brown. So that's kind of the element. Not much to it. <laughs> 